Hey guys, welcome back. I hope everyone is staying safe. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different from my normal video content because we're behind the computer today. So I'll be going over three ways that I like to manipulate color within my photos using Adobe Photoshop. Although I do have a Skillshare class where I edit two photos from start to finish, I've never shared any of my editing techniques here on YouTube. Now some of the tools I go over within Photoshop might not be available with your specific software that you use, but hopefully you'll still take away something from everything that I share with you guys today. So let's get into it. All right, so this is the photo that I chose to edit with you guys today. I thought it would be a good choice just because of the amount of colors there are to play with in this image. As you can see in this right hand corner, this layer is actually already a smart object. And that is because I already put it through Camera Raw and did some minor adjustments to the lighting, the shadows, the highlights, just to make it a little bit more visible for you guys. But Camera Raw is actually our first method of manipulating colors, so we'll be jumping right back into that in just a minute. Um, but if you're interested, this image was shot with a Nikon Z7 with a 35mm f1.4 lens attached. And I actually do like the colors that are already in this image, but I do want to play with them a little bit more and just get them exactly right. Like I already mentioned, this raw image was already put through Camera Raw, so all we have to do is click the Smart Object layer right here. With all this mention of Camera Raw, let's talk about what it actually is. Uh, now this is an Adobe plugin, and it is a processing software that reads your image's raw information, that is if you decide to shoot your photo initially in raw, and it allows you to correct things like the white balance, contrast, hues, and more, in a way where you're accessing that image's pixels and giving those pixels instructions on what you want to change. And like I mentioned, uh, you're only able to access those raw pixels if you did shoot your image in raw. Another way to open Camera Raw if you shot your image in JPEG is to make sure your layer is clickable, head on over to Filter and Camera Raw Filter, and it'll open up that same menu. But it will not be accessing that image's internal raw information like you see here. Now this is a fairly non-destructive way of editing depending on how much you want to push your image. If you head on up here, you can actually just hover over these little icons and you'll see what Camera Raw offers us. So we have things like HSL sliders, split toning, lens correction effects, calibration, and more. First, we're gonna head on over to the HSL sliders, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, first, we're just gonna play a little bit with the reds. I actually like to go through all of these and just see what we can change up. And as you can see, as I shift this hue slider in the red panel, it's shifting only the reds in the image. If we head on over to the left side, you'll see a little bit more magenta. And over here, it turns a little bit more orange. For me, I don't wanna tweak the reds too, too much just because they're getting a little bit destructed, but I kind of like this orange tone right here near the middle. As you can see, I kind of just go through each slider and um, see what my eye adjusts to. All right, I'm liking those kind of minimal adjustments. We're gonna head on over to the saturation now. And this totally helps if you have a certain color that got too saturated when you were shooting, especially when you're shooting kind of LED neon stuff. It tends to be a little bit more oversaturated, kind of like to desaturate these just a bit. And then we're gonna head on over to luminance and just tweak this a bit. And as you can see, I'm not doing anything too dramatic within this Camera Raw uh, plugin. It's a nice kind of initial edit you can make, but it totally does not have to be the end of it. Obviously, when you open this up, there's plenty of more to do. And as you can see, this just kind of brightens or darkens whatever kind of um, color slider you're choosing. And before you open up this image, you'll just want to be sure to change this format into a smart object. So that way you can come back to the original changes you've made and change anything from there. Awesome. So now let's move on to the second way I utilize to manipulate color. And that is within an adjustment layer called selective color. What I'm going to do quickly is just remove our previous color corrections we made in Camera Raw just so we can work with a pretty flat color profile here. Uh, by definition, Selective Color is a tool within Photoshop that allows you to cross blend your individual color channels using specific sliders like we just saw in Camera Raw. Now this allows you to ultimately choose a specific color or tone and add or alter the hues in which you originally see within your photo. This is another great way to make your reds more cyan or more magenta, however you please. How we're gonna access this is down here at the bottom of your layer panel. It's this thing that kind of looks like a half circle. So we're just gonna click that and head to selective color right here. So I can go ahead and access this adjustment layer anytime I want throughout this entire edit. And if I decide to put things below this layer or above it, it will affect it accordingly to where it lays, above or below. And just like Camera Raw, we have a lot of colors to choose from, and we even have white, neutral, and blacks that we can play with. So from here, we're just going to go through each color and tweak as necessary. As you can see, it's picking up a lot of cyan here, so this is kind of a big player within the color adjustments right now. 
And as you have these kind of colors that play a big role in your adjusting, I would suggest you just do this very meticulously and um, spend more time on those than the other colors that, you know, don't show up as much. Also, just to note within the magenta, sometimes the yellow and reds as well, this is where your kind of skin tone comes into play. So you'll want to make sure that you're, you know, looking out for that and not just the colors behind your subject if you're shooting a portrait. Another thing I like to do is just duplicate that selective color once again, and you'll see it does whatever you did times two, so you'll really get a kick up in the color there. Um, I'm not liking it right now, but I think it's a fun thing to note. Cool, so now let's go ahead and delete this. We're going to move on to our last way of manipulating color. All right, so last but not least, we'll be talking about gradient maps. I've been using these within my workflow a bit more as of recent, uh, but it's another great way to change up the colors of your image and honestly, in a more dramatic way than the other two, depending on, of course, the opacity of this specific layer. Making a gradient map is another adjustment layer, and it lets you map out a color value to a different tone or color, depending on whatever you want to set it to. Now, the colors you see across each selectable set shows a gradient where one end represents shadow tones and the other highlights. So all we're going to do is head down here once again, like we did with selective color, and it actually just so happens to be right above it. So we're going to click right here on gradient map, and this is already giving us a really funky effect. I'm clearly not into this, but this is just, I guess, what it was set to, depending on the colors I was editing with previously. But don't worry, we're going to change this. So what it actually did was grab the two colors that were over here, and if you press D, it'll bring you back to a simple black and white. So as you can see, if I make another gradient map, it's a little less crazy. <laughs> and now this black and white is a really good representation of your shadows and highlights. So naturally you'd most likely wanna choose a lighter color for your highlights and a darker color for your shadows. So whatever color is set there, you're telling those tones in your photo to turn that color value. So changing the shadow to a darker color, maybe like a dark magenta, will make it look a little bit more natural versus a bright pink like this. For me, I like to go with a soft light blending mode whenever I play with uh, gradient maps. Um, so what we're going to do is just quickly choose two different values right here. Let's go for a dark muted blue. And a bright pink. Why not? Okay. I like to think of soft light as a diffuse spotlight onto your image. Every color that is lighter than 50% gray will get even lighter and every color darker than 50% gray will get even darker. So super contrasted, but you'll clearly want to turn the opacity down. I'm going to go for like a, let's go for like a 30. From there, we can kind of see what we want to do without it being too harsh. So let's click our gradient map and play around with the presets we have here. I'm definitely aiming for a more darker gradient. What's fun about this is you can always switch these around as well, or even create another one. Okay, I could actually mess with this photo for hours, but to avoid that, I'm going to show the end result image here. As you can see, I did some further tweaks with the tones, the curves. I edited out a bunch of those little wires within the neon. So there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the end result and learned something throughout what I shared with you guys today. So if you guys are using any of these techniques or tools and want to implement them into your own work, be sure to tag me on Instagram or tweet me on Twitter because I'd love to see your results. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and would like to see more editing techniques and tutorials just like this one. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.